Now for our weekly news segment. Hello, Tony. How do you do? What's up, Tony? Hey, guys. Um, Paraguay sounds awesome. I know. Um, yeah, it sounds awesome. I think you said, I think Linus said that there's no capital gains so far. Uh, yeah, basically that there currently isn't any regulation. So, you know, it's like, it's like Portugal, right? So maybe, maybe one day they'll implement regulations, but as of now, there's, there's no taxes. It's not recognized. So people just use it. Yeah. Yeah. Th things can change, but you know, it's good to have a second citizenship just because, you know, you pull up one, it doesn't work. Like during COVID, you pull up the other one, same person. Uh, the same person can go somewhere or fly. Yeah, no, there, there's value in being able to fluidly travel somewhere with as little obstacles as possible and, and move at will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That. And I like the farm, the farm aspect. That that could be cool. Yeah, Doug for sure. The farmer, <laughs> farmer, <laughs> Paraguay, the, farmer the hills Doug. of Paraguay. <laughs> <laughs> Have my gratuitous farm out there. <laughs> That's a plan for retirement. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have <laughs> we have quite a lot of things to go uh, through. Um, so if you guys want to grab a drink, like you said, or <laughs> <laughs> five hours later, <laughs> just I'm just envisioning uh, we can start making cottage cheese on the farm. Oh my goodness! Some organic cottage cheese, grass fed. Sorry, Tony. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's fine. Like I'm, I'm also thinking about it, <laughs> and you can live off Monero. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, we can we can move all the Monero people there, and you know, we'll live together. We'll <laughs> no, that sounds like a cult. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, like the Amish people. Yes. All right, I, all um, right. Let's do this. Yeah, take it away. Sunita might sneak away for a drink, but take it away. I'll, I'll yeah, no problem. I think my laptop is gonna. I don't think it's gonna die. No, I think no, it's fine. It should be fine. No, no. Um. All right, so let's begin with uh, some CSS proposals. Uh, we got two that are. Uh, pretty important. Uh, the first one being a Monero signer, um, which is over here. And we already have half of the contribution um, uh, raised, which is awesome. So basically, we do have a seed signer for Bitcoin, which is this one. And if I scroll down below a little bit, uh, the goal of seed signer is to lower the cost and complexity of Bitcoin multi signature wallet use. To accomplish this goal, Seed Signer offers anyone the opportunity to build a verifiably air-gapped stateless Bitcoin signing device using an expensive public available hardware components. Um, so cool. this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is cool because um, essentially this product is aiming to get the code that is made for uh, Bitcoin UI slash UX and make it available for Monero. And it's gonna make Monero even more um, resilient to um, to um, censorship because essentially, as it's written here, um, or is it uh, the project aims to make it easy for anybody to make a dedicated offline signing device out of low cost commodity computer components. Um, so essentially, you can go out and buy those things yourselves, and then uh, you can go from from there, which that's is awesome. Hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's... you can do it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Very cool. I think so. so yeah, so that's uh, that's super cool. And if we go into the second CSS proposal, um, this one is about Seraphis. And we have Dangerous Freedom, which um, I like the name. Um, so essentially, Dangerous Freedom uh, wants, to more, wants to work on uh, Seraphis and wants to create a couple additional functions, but especially he wants to develop a wallet for Seraphis. And uh, my goal is to be able to create the necessary functions to open a wallet, perform a CLI, transfer address amount that would create a transaction in the Seraphis, jump to standards, close the wallet, reopen a new wallet, and you know he goes into details about what he wants to do. Uh, but this is important. This is a very important development, and we already raised 1.67 Monero. So if you do want to spend your Monero, and you've already spent it a lot in cake pay, uh, this is another good way to to do it. Let's. Uh, uh, we should get this guy on the on Monero Talk or Monero Topia. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've been trying to get ACKJ from the Lord of the Rings paper, but I didn't get any re reply back. Um, but hopefully that we will. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, so more he wants, about... build a, he wants to build a wallet. Um, didn't somebody already build like a, a test net wallet for Seraphis or I don't know, I could be mistaken. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. So I, I can't comment on that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure to be honest. I thought code did something, but and so hmm. explain explain this a bit more. What is this the wallet? So the wallet's gonna allow you to just uh interact with, with Seraphis? Uh, Seraphis, yeah. I mean essentially um it's a simple wallet. You can open, save, close a file. Um, keep track of the transactions, inputs and outputs, perform a transfer in the Seraphis standards, mm -hmm. and prepare everything for the serialization and storage in blockchain. So uh, it's going to be a simple wallet uh, designed for Seraphis. Oh, and he's saying, all right, I will closely work with Co. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, okay. where is that? Yeah, yeah, I will closely work with Co, RB Runner, and um, J Berman. Um, to better elaborate the tasks. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's that is sweet. And uh, yeah, just this will start to bridge. So, like you know, when when Cake wants to add it in the future, the you know, like the tech will already be built out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be very cool. And um, he also has a website called Monero Inflation. He has spotted a fungibility issue in Monero, a mailability issue, and all this stuff. So the guy is pretty knowledgeable. Uh, from what I see, so that's awesome news. Um, but moving on, and then we're gonna uh, have those new new address schemes. That's the only thing, right? With Seraphis, that's that's a little scary. That part. Yeah, but we're also gonna have. Um, I forget to. I think uh, the ring ring size is gonna jump to 128 oh, or yeah. something like that. Oh yeah. my god, that's insane! Yeah, no, it's, it's all worried, but it's gonna be a big change yeah. with the new address format. That's like. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big change. But it's going to be a big change, it's all, but it's, it's all good stuff. Yeah, for sure. But it, uh, for example, we had the Lord of the Rings paper, and um, it was explaining um, Monero ring signature resiliency to AI, and the and that was based on the eleven <laughs> ring size, and it showed that um, you know it can it can break into nine percent of the transactions, but with you know then we got into sixteen. So the percentage must be lower, but 128, huh, that's a huge jump. Yeah, so it's yeah cool. at that point, it becomes like statistically equivalent to being, you know, right, uh, an infinite, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like you're, you're approaching such such a large anonymity set at that point, that's, my understanding. It's insane. Um, but um, yeah, so let's go into more technical things. <laughs> In case this wasn't technical enough. Um, so Sarah has built an open source standalone Rust Monero transaction um, library. And um, Sarah wrote a long thread um, detailing um, why they have, why they have, they have um, made this. Um, so essentially, so there was already a Monero library in Rust called Monero RS. And then um this thread goes into details of why there's the need of another project and it's highly technical it talks about c plus plus libraries and all this stuff um it's a bit too technical for me as well i'm not too familiar familiar uh but um it's not ready to be used in production yet we hope to let people start experimenting with and be able to provide feedback so we can work on something usable in a variety variety of ways to the entire community. Um, but yeah, so just more more development for Yeah, Monero. that was uh that's Luke. That, Luke. The kids in it. A phenom. A phenom. Yes. He's amazing. <laughs> He's gonna rewrite this. He said he was gonna do it and he did it. Yeah, he did it. He's an amazing person. And he's he's interesting because you know he has these incredible skills, right? And this like creative intelligence and he's still a really charming person yes. to be around at the same time usually if you're that type of person yeah, he was so awesome like, to be around <laughs> you know not the best you know necessarily the person you want to hang out with 
right? But he's just such a he's an awesome person. Hilarious yeah. too. Yeah. He's constantly cracking jokes. Again, that <laughs> meetup was awesome. Yeah, he was just cracking. <laughs> we're was, big fans, Luke. Yeah. We're big fans. We love you, Luke. <laughs> You're listening. <laughs> Definitely a down to earth and awesome guy for sure. Yeah. Super smart. Yeah. Yes. Super smart. Um but yeah, so I would say let's uh, go into the next thing. Oh god, that this I hate the the white background. Yeah, I can was... so much better. <laughs> So if you're showing my face, it's just gonna. <laughs> no, no, no. You're you were not. It's um, uh, they okay. see, they only see the the screen that you're showing. So just okay, that's lighting. better. <laughs> that's better. Proper lighting. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so on on the next thing we have local Monero, and I really like this news, and it shows that local Monero, uh, does care. Um, so they're using the unofficial dollar blue rate for the exchange rate between the Argentinian pesos and the US dollar. So what is a dollar blue? Mm -hmm. Essentially in Argentina, um, the banks are trying to manipulate um, manipulate the system and they're making, making it super hard for people to get dollars. And if you give back dollars, right? And you want to get pesos, they actually give you, um, you know, pretty good exchange for that. Um, but that, that doesn't that is not a true value. So as someone detailed, I think, down below. Um, let's say that you sell Monero um, for dollars. Right now it's like 145. So at the official rate, that's 21,750 uh, Argentinian pesos. But with the blue dollar, so the uh, um, yeah, with the blue dollar, you get 42,050. That's double, double the money, and it, that's a lot of money for them. Um, so yeah, this this is also you know, um, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, dark market uh, exchange rate. It's not how it's supposed to be. And Argentina is not the only country that is um, trying to make it hard for people to get dollars. Uh, the US is doing the same actually. Uh, they're trying to maintain the dollars within the country. And it happened to me also when I tried to exchange to move money around from the U.S. banks to Romanian banks, and I had a lot of issues. Cap, capital. Yeah, we, we actually go into this exact topic with uh, when Franco was on the show when we uh, mm -hmm. spoke about this. I mean, it's the capital controls, right? And it's not easy to get uh, dollars in and out of Argentina. So it's it's a, it's a it's a grow. It's a real. He said it's a real growing use case there. People using crypto. For mm -hmm. sending money in and out of the country, and yeah, this uh, being able to—he was talking about the you know the difference in ex the the official exchange rate, rate and you know the, the essentially the the street exchange rate, and it's basically just kind of a, a hidden tax uh, that they impose on people that are going through it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. regular exchanges. Yeah, that 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 is extremely unfortunate, um, but yeah, it's a good use case for Monero. Yeah, no, it's great for crypto. Perfect. You know, it's um, it's growing adoption because of it. So, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Yeah, good stuff. It's perfect. Um, then this is cool. Also, so we have the well, you know, it's bad that it was a hack, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into the cool part <laughs> soon. <laughs> I started off. Well, so who was it? Who they had? <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> <laughs> like these people <laughs> yeah well, yeah actually yeah exactly um so okay optus which is a telecommunication company in australia second the second largest one actually has been hacked um and this article goes into more detail about it but the most important thing detail is that um the hacker uh under the username of optus data <laughs> um so he offered Optus a way out of the situation and to not sell their customers' data because I, um, I think they, uh, Optus data got a hold of 10 million accounts, which is a lot. Um, so essentially, um, he offered Optus um, that if they don't want uh, them to sell the data, they need to pay a ransom of $1 million. But now, how are they going to pay the million dollars? Is it PayPal? Is it Venmo, Zelle? Bitcoin? Nope, none of the above. It's Monero, actually. In Monero. Uh, in Monero. <laughs> um, like the sound might be. In Monero. So the request was to be paid in Monero, a decentralized crypto that obfuscates transactions to achieve anonymity and fungibility. 
so yeah more and more people are um using monero for ransomware and um that's that's you know i guess it's a bad thing that they hacked they got hacked i'm not sure what kind of company they are maybe it was a good thing but hacker wanted to monero hackers are smart they're gonna do hacker things they're gonna ask for monero mm -hmm. Yeah. which is awesome uh then we have um <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just unbelievable how long it's taken for them to move more into monero though that that i never understood right like it was it was for me i, I never understood why it took so long for these people to move away for big from bitcoin you know i guess just the, the liquidity i guess is is the answer but still I yeah, I, I think the only answer is liquidity because as a hacker, you're very much aware of the tools that you use and you can't risk being exposed at any point right. during the hack. So they must be highly aware, you know? Yeah. Um, I think just liquidity. I think that's the only the only issue. But yeah, Monero is growing. And yeah, that's that's an interesting question. Maybe we should interview some of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. That'll be awesome. Um, of not course, like we're, we're not promoting these things, but it's since you know, obviously, let's be real. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, then we have Binance training law enforcement to catch crypto criminals. Um, so this is in in the name of terrorism financing, ransomware, human trafficking, child pornography, and financial crimes using crypto. Obviously, um, these are not good things. Uh, but Monero protects everybody. It protects people that choose to do these kind of things and people that, you know, are just good citizens. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, so this this is this is certainly interesting. And I haven't heard of this one. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Monero doesn't, you, you can't do this in Monero. <laughs> There's no one to catch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're going to be they're going to be focused on Bitcoin, right? It's like the perfect tool for "quote unquote" fighting crime. Um, but you know, depends what you define as as a crime. You know, something some things are obvious; other things uh, might be things that are are morally necessary, like that disagreeing perhaps with your government and you know going out and doing something that's then for some reason considered illegal, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the concerns. Another question is, is um, so they use a lot, um, they try to push the narrative that we're doing this for, you know, um, tracking malicious things over, you know, over the finance sector. But the question is, what is the percentage of people that actually engage in these actions versus the total uh, population? You know, is it a, what is the total percentage? Is it just a minority? Of course, it must be like a small minority that engage in this stuff. So it's just like... A, you know a way to push for more surve surveillance mm -hmm. uh, but then let's talk about binance one more time um so binance appeared on burj khalifa which is the tallest building in dubai and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because as much as we don't like centralized exchanges this is a good thing for the space because it attracts people into crypto a lot of people still don't know about crypto and right now uh it's important for people to first just discover crypto and then they'll find their way to uh, to Monero for sure. So this is not, you know, that's wild. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's pretty, and and I think Nam because Nam is living there. Yeah, Nam. Yeah, that, I, she, that, I know it's all from her. Yeah, and she, I think she also took a picture. Um, yeah, so I, I think this is cool. I think you know, I don't like centralized exchanges, and nor do I, nor do I like this. Uh, but you know, it helps. Yeah, I mean, I've always compared these things to like America Online, right? Like. Mm -hmm. It was the worst possible version of the internet, but it got people onto the internet. And then the internet, the true internet blossomed from it, you know? So mm -hmm. these are just the initial on-ramps from the fiat world to the crypto world. Yeah, um, helps a lot. And what, what people need to realize, you know, if, if they're going to have to, if they have to go through centralized exchanges, by far the best way to do it is to purchase Monero. Right, and move your Monero off the exchange. Like, if you have to go through KYC AML to get your crypto, uh, you you should get Monero, right? Not not get Bitcoin, you know, and move off the exchange with Monero. And then, even if you wanted some other crypto, that's fine. But 
Um, I, I don't think we get that message across enough, right? People that are like using, you know, obviously it's not on a lot of exchanges, but for people that live in a place where, you know, they can get it, I mean, it's still on crack in here in the US, but, you know, it should be promoted more as if you have to use a centralized exchange to get from fiat into crypto, purchase Monero and move your Monero off the exchange and then get your crypto, you know, mm -hmm. off the exchange. Your other also, yeah, and also like say say that um, say that you actually want to purchase Bitcoin or you know Bitcoin Cash or whatever. Why not just purchase Monero first from Kraken or Binance or whatever, get that same 2K wallet, then just swap it into Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, no, that's exact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, right? I'm not saying yeah. like you should. Oh, you, people should only buy. Obviously, I think people should only buy Monero. <laughs> but it, ignoring that, yeah. if people <laughs> want you know whatever it is, they want Dogecoin. If you're going to get your Dogecoin, you might as well get it in the best way possible, which is, you know, covering your tracks. If you have to go through a centralized exchange to do so. You're like, it, yeah, exactly what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, exactly. You don't even need a coin join. You don't need to worry about this stuff anymore. Right, right. That's, that's a, yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> it's not promoted enough, you know, like the meme isn't out there. Like if you have to use an exchange to get your, to get your crypto, start with Monero. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but not, not, let's get into more political things. But these political things always tie into Monero, of course. Um, I think we had someone comment on the last video that we shouldn't bring politics on the show, but it's it's kind of impossible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish I, could, yeah. I, I, I saw that comment I know, when we, we sat down. I was like, shit, I wish yeah. I would have seen it. That's like, no, there's, there's, no. there's, there's politics involved in the show, guys. I mean, that's that's. I mean, we're literally trying to create. Uh, you know, a, a stateless money. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a political effort as much as it is a, you know, technological effort. We're trying mm -hmm. to get the hearts and minds of people and get them to opt out and to opt into crypto. Mm -hmm. That's political. <laughs> yeah, that is political. <laughs> I mean, we have to we have to win over the people and turn them into Monero users, and then all all these other topics relate the direction that the world is currently headed in and becoming more totalitarian completely ties into what we're trying to do here if the world wasn't like that we wouldn't need monero you wouldn't need it mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. the tendency of 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 governments so how do we, how do we not talk about these issues is what i'm saying <laughs> it's literally the other side of the coin yeah you can't i mean if if we had monero's so, um economical system then we, we would talk a lot about math <laughs> not so much about <laughs> politics right because <laughs> it's governed by math not by politicians but you know now whatever yeah. um yeah so let's talk about something huge so italy has a new prime minister um georgia meloni and um she has been gaining a lot of traction and she's quite um loved from what i see from the italian by the italian people um because she's more aware of what is going on and she's refusing to to go with the narrative. And YouTube actually removed her passionate speech on fam family breakdown. Um, and play, play the speech, play it. Yeah, I hope it's gonna play. Yeah, this, this, the, you know, I'm sure there's, there's people out there who despise, despise this woman, people that are in the Monero community because of mm -hmm. what she's, uh, I guess, politically has been associated with. But I don't know, these words sound pretty convincing to me from when i heard it <laughs> it's pretty powerful pretty, pretty <laughs> powerful um give it, give it we, yeah, let's see if it you can make it work i think D does it work you got to put it louder you see the little um where the little uh yeah, audio nice. thing is next to play yeah oh it's on high maybe but it's your I computer because i hear it faintly maybe you got to go to your settings and put up the volume I think my ears are gonna blow up if uh, if I do uh, that. Can you play um, it on our? Um, I need the the link. Yeah, I can play it on ours. Can you send me the link and I'll Just play it? Just post it on the account, yeah. Uh, yes. Let's Just see. And paste it. I mean, actually, you sent it to me. Let me see if I can find it. I, I'll, I'll put it here. Oh, no, I have it here. Oh, you do? Uh, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. It's such a good video, honestly. Let me see if I can share it a little bit. Share, share, share. Mm -hmm. Then we got one more, which is um excited to talk about this one. Edward Snowden. Oh yeah. That Russian was citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. The world is insane right now. <laughs> it's some simulation, I feel. <laughs> it's getting really fun. Yeah. 
sempre di queste Tenga. domande. A monte c'è quella che ci facciamo oggi, perché, perché la famiglia è un nemico? Perché, perché la famiglia fa così paura? C'è una risposta unica per tutte queste domande. Perché ci definisce, perché è la nostra identità. identità. Perché tutto, perché tutto quello, quello che ci definisce in questo tempo, tempo è un nemico. Un nemico. Per chi vorrebbe, per chi vorrebbe che, che non avessimo non più un'identità e che, e che fosse, fossimo solamente, solamente schiavi, schiavi consumatori, consumatori perfetti. perfetti. E allora e è sotto, sotto attacco l'identità nazionale, è sotto attacco l'identità religiosa, è sotto attacco l'identità di genere, è sotto attacco l'identità familiare. Non, non devo potermi definire italiana, italiana cristiana, cristiana, donna, donna madre, madre, no. Io devo essere cittadino X, genere X, genitore 1, genitore 2, devo essere un numero. Perché quando sarò solamente un numero, quando non avrò più un'identità, quando non avrò più radici, beh, allora sarò lo schiavo perfetto in balia della grande speculazione finanziaria. Il consumatore perfetto. Uh, that was just so... I mean, there's no better yeah. messenger than, a, you know, an Italian woman. I know. About <laughs> family. I, I mean, she, she carried that message very well. Whether or not there's ulterior motives there, and I don't know, there's some like nefarious things behind, uh, you know, who she's associated with. I don't know, but that you just look at that one speech and like the words that were said there. I mean, it's hard to disagree with with being behind, you know, concepts that and, she's talking about, right? I don't know, right? And it, yeah, 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 for sure. I'm she, well, more power to her, honestly. She's yeah. such an amazing woman from just from that video alone. And the fact that she she talked about family and community that that means a lot. That yeah. Means a lot. Um, so yeah, you can you know you can make a case that you know she's fighting against um, all the malicious people in the world that don't want you to, to have privacy. And I'm curious of what she's going to bring in Italy and how she's going to change Italy. Yeah, someone's asking what was the excuse for the censor. Oh, I don't know. Did they, did they make it post a reason or? Well, yeah, what did YouTube say? She was booted from where? From, from YouTube. From YouTube. Uh, the features, well, YouTube has maintained that it can restrict videos that feature spam and deceptive practices, sensitive materials such as nudity, suicide, or vul vulgar language, violent or dangerous content. Okay, I think that's hate speech hate or speech. harassment. harassment. Regulated um, goods such as fire. firearms. Firearms. Yeah. Oh, wait, what, what, what was wait? I don't even know. Like, so which one did she? I think the people from YouTube don't speak Italian and they're pissed off. So <laughs> they just took it off. Or... I have to listen to that again. So then, what are they accusing her of? Which which one? Violent or dangerous content? I think because this is dangerous content. You know, what, what? She, didn't, she didn't say like we need to. You know, now kill the people that are, that are responsible. <laughs> no, for no, 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 no. But in, in, in the sense that it's dangerous content because it makes people people aware of um, of what they're trying to do. I think that you know that's the dangerous part. She didn't say you know anything. No, I know. Specific. But for them yeah. to say it on those grounds, I mean, yeah, it's wild that they censored her. It just shows where YouTube is standing. Yeah, and once again, um, like, all right, let's say you completely disagree with her policy. Doesn't matter. The fact that these these silos of information that everybody's tapped into are being uh, censored, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and also... Curated. The information you get is being curated. That's, that's a problem. Yeah, and um, also, let's see. Um, let's see if it's still like that. I think if you look up Georgie Meloni and you go to videos, I think, I think they took off. Yeah, they took uh, out a lot of them. Yeah, I think. Let's see if I type Georgia Meloni. I know that they've been censoring her a lot. Yeah, yeah. See, look. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Luke chimed in. Very Luke kind words. He has very kind words. Thank y'all. We need to hang out more often. I just joined. Yet backtracked when I saw it in the desk. <laughs> oh yes, nice. of course. I oh, love to look. <laughs> the octopus profile. The octopus, I know, it's very unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Let's talk about one. Let's talk about Edward Snowden uh, yeah. because he has been granted Russian citizenship. Um, so, Mr. Snowden said in 2020 that he was applying for Russian citizenship, uh, describing the decision as a practical measure to give his family greater freedom crossing borders. Doesn't help him now much. <laughs> Um, his request was granted by Mr. Putin in a decree dated Monday and published by the Kremlin. 
Um, what does this all mean? I mean, it's, this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah. Snowden, yeah, sure. you know, uh, I, I love the, you know, the the message that he's been spreading to the world. I mean, he's woke, woken up so many people to uh, these ideas of, of mass surveillance and the dangers of it and the fact that it's real and happening. Um, the tie-in with Russia is just really interesting, right? I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. It's it's a good play by by Putin, obviously, right? Uh, I I don't know what the what the goal is there. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, I I think the U.S. is uh, um, probably pissed. You know, cause they don't know what's going to happen or what Snowden is going to, you know. And who, who is who is the real Edward Snowden? I mean, is he is he a, a diehard patriot? You know that really mm -hmm. understands patriotism better than most and is living it out, or is he, you know, somebody who's got ulterior motives? Obviously, we'll, we'll never know. We'll never know. But but you know, the one indicator I use for judging people, which you know, which is something that I I, re I don't know I I've justified in my own mind is Monero. Like I've studied. It's hard to be able to judge somebody because you don't have a consistent thing to look at because you never know all the information, right? Mm -hmm. if you could judge somebody based on saying, well, what do you think this equation mm -hmm. equates to? You know, it's math, right? And now you look at it and I look at it. And we both agree there's, there's a starting point. So I'm not saying, you know, maybe I'm wrong in my analysis of Monero, but given my analysis and how much effort I've put into it and my conviction, the fact that he's like essentially anti Monero and pro Zcash is very concerning to me. That's very revealing. Mm -hmm. Like, may, maybe, like, what does he know that I don't know? Uh, and I, I, you know, the, that's what mm -hmm. I unfortunately am you, used to judge him. So I, mm -hmm. I would love to know why he, you know, what his reasoning is, because it just doesn't seem doesn't seem right. I, I think we have to double the offer from 25,000 to 50,000. <laughs> that, that, that was such a tell. We got in touch with them. We spoke to his people. They were down. We were going to have the talk. They said, all right, it's going to be 20, whatever it was, 20, 25 grand. And we didn't say no. We said, like, we can, ra we can raise it from the Monero community, but can we pay you? And then I started saying, can we pay you in Monero for it? And that's when they, they turned. And mm -hmm. they said, uh, he's busy now. He can no longer do that. He can't do this. <laughs> like, <Robert>. what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he got extra work, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, what? Yeah. 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 Was like, that's yeah. very telling to me. And obviously, he's that. Does he, has he ever mentioned Monero? I don't think he's ever even mentioned it, right? No, that I've seen. I don't think so. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not that I've seen. I don't know. What's, what's, no. what's your take on it? My take. Well, my only concern is obviously he's a very intelligent person and um, he's very aware of um, privacy. So obviously very aware of privacy. So I think maybe he has maybe a, not a contract, but you know maybe something with Zcash. And if he promotes Monero in any way, he's going to lose whatever he has with Zcash. That, that's my only thing. Why would why wouldn't he talk a little bit about Monero? Obviously, you know everybody knows about Monero and how it's defaulted by private. And you know you can like Zcash. That's that's absolutely perfect. I have no problem. But why not talk a little bit about Monero and just say they're both fine. This one is just different from the other one. Why? Right. You know. Right. That's... Unless he felt like Zcash for some reason it was like truly superior and Monero is is harmful to the ecosystem. Like, but I don't see how he could think that when it's actually gaining real world adoption and is a tool that does all these things that he talks about that are that are so scary and it itself so many of those problems. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mention he doesn't mention it. It's bizarre. bizarre. No, yeah, yeah, it is bizarre. I feel let's let's go to seventy five thousand, all right? Let's let's get them <laughs> on. <you know? laughs> or we're stopping there though. He should be paying us so we could fix his brand. He needs to fix his brand. He's like <laughs> people don't trust him, Snowden. If you if you if you were out there talking about Monero, people would would trust your your intentions more.
Yeah, but still, he has, you know, you you can't say much about him because um, it takes a lot to do what he did and to flee from his own country while he has a girlfriend also. I'm not sure if he had kids at the time, but for sure a girlfriend. Leave his family, I think, whatever, everything behind. And I don't think he's even allowed to, to leave Russia because, well, not allowed, but if he does, then, you know, any other country could just... Extradite him, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Whatever, I don't know. No idea. But it's interesting. It's crazy. And yeah, this has been this week's news section. It's Guys, fun. if you do want to check out what was that? Sorry. That was an epic news section. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I, I took my time because you guys, you know, it's not the morning. It's not, not the <laughs> you guys got drinks, so you know. Drinks, right? Just, yeah. You just kept going. Um, yeah yeah for sure it's it's also a lot of fun um, but guys if you do want to check out uh, the links please go in the description below uh, there's all the links um, so you can check it out read for yourself let us know in the comments what you think um, and this has been this week's and see you guys next week